everyone. Thank you all so much for being here with us this evening. My name is Roseanne Santos. I am the Director of Alumni Engagement here at the college. I've been with the college for about 10 years and in this position for three. And I wanna thank you so much for joining us today with Dean Dara Byrne and with our special alumni guest, Joe Mazella, who comes from the Computer Science Program. And with that, I am going to go ahead and just hand it right off to Dean Byrne so you guys can all get right into this wonderful conversation. If any of you need me for any technical issues, I will be off camera, but I'm here. Just send me a direct message so as not to interrupt the flow of conversation and I will help you um, behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Dean Byrne. And I am so excited to be with you tonight to talk with Joe Mazzella. So Joe um, has such an, an amazing career that um, you know I can't I can't wait for you to hear him talk, not just about what he's doing now, but how exactly he um, transitioned from the computer science program in 2016 at John Jay to where he is as a manager with KPMG's cybersecurity services practice. Um, computer science is one of our um, fastest growing major and particularly with students interested in cybersecurity. So I'm sure that uh, those of you who are here today are going to have a lot of questions for Joe. So I'm going to start by um, introducing Joe, and then I'm going to give each of you the opportunity to introduce yourselves. You might want to say what your major is, what year you're in, or anything else that you'd like him to know about you. So as I said, this is Joe Mazzella, who graduated from John Jay in 16 with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Information Security. He's currently the manager, a manager with KPMG's cybersecurity services practice and has worked extensively in the information security field in both education and industry, focusing his career on insider threat risk management. I know for many of you, this sounds like a dream pursuit. Having earned his BS in computer science and information security and multiple industry recognized certifications, Joe has consulted on various cybersecurity projects and has taught courses on the subject. Thank you, Joe, so much for being here with us. So I'm going to start by asking the students if you could just introduce yourself. I'm going to start with you, Rafe, because you are on my screen and you're right next to me. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rafe. I'm a lower senior in um, um, criminology. I'm minoring in um, dispute resolution, and uh, I'm here because I'm interested in cybersecurity and have some technical IT background. And I want to just grow more and learn from um, Joe. Wonderful. Thank you and welcome, Catherine. Um, hi, my name is Catherine Tipograph, and my current major is criminology, but I am planning to change it to cybersecurity. And I'm a freshman. Oh, wonderful. Anthony. Hey, my name is Anthony. Uh, my major is computer science and information security. Um, I currently have a CompTIA Security Plus uh, certification, and I'm looking to uh, attain more knowledge on cybersecurity and be successful in that area. Wonderful. Well, this is a great way to start. Welcome. Daniel. Hi, my name is Daniel Franco. I'm a transfer student, and uh, my major is computer science with uh, information systems, security systems. And I also have um, CompTIA Security Plus certification, and I'm looking more to see, like, how do you get into the industry and what other things to learn? Welcome, Daniel. I was telling Joe before you logged in that we'd built a, um, a dual degree pathway with community colleges for cybersecurity students and computer science students. So I'm glad that you're here. Jonathan. Are you there, Jonathan? Okay, skipping over Jonathan to Jennifer. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer. Um, I'm a senior in John Jay, and my major is criminal justice, minor in cybercrime, and I would like to attain more uh, knowledge on cybersecurity. Wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. Hassan? How's it going, everyone? My name is Hassan. I'm a junior by now. My degree that I'm getting for bachelor's is on criminal justice. Um, the reason I uh, came here today, I was, I was just like, my main purpose was to like see um, if it's even possible for me as a criminal justice major, you know, to go into this field maybe, or like learn something new about it. And well, that's a great question. And I'm glad that you're here. Thank you, Hassan. Jensi? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Jancy Morales. I am a senior. Uh, uh, my bachelor is the computer science and I'm graduating soon, hopefully crossing the fingers. And I am here today to learn more about how to uh, work on getting a job within the industry. Since I have not done any uh, computer science before, I switched from multimedia arts. So I changed my major between associate and bachelor. So it's a great opportunity for me to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Jensi. I'm glad you're here. And Nicholas, our lead peer advisor. Uh, hi, everyone. It's good to see you here. Uh, so I'm a lead peer advisor. Uh, myself, I'm a senior. Uh, my major is international criminal justice and my minor is political science. Uh, and if you have any questions regarding the uh, you know, your majors, minors, uh, if you'd like to oversee your general education or your electives, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we are always ready to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Nicholas, and for all the work that you do. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to start off with three very straightforward questions and then after that, open up the floor for you all to ask questions of Joe because I know that you you will have um, really exciting and interesting questions. And uh, I see that uh, Jonathan, you're having some difficulty logging in and out. If you wanted to introduce yourself, you have one last chance to do it. Okay, so we're just going to start then. What did you major in and how did you get from your major to where you are now. So we know that you majored in computer science, but tell us a little bit about the journey from 2016 to being a manager at KPMG. Sure, so um, I actually started my, uh, my education pursuit at John Jay as a criminal justice major. So I was one of those that switched majors midway through. Uh, always wanted to work in federal law enforcement, thought that was the right track. But when I got to John Jay, I started doing some serious research and saw that federal law enforcement agencies don't have criminal justice as one of their pursuit areas, as one of their major areas that they recruit out of. So I was looking through the list. Um, economics was on there. I am horrible with math. Um, some of the other areas like philosophy, I couldn't see myself getting into. But I was always kind of technical. I was always good with computers, fixing things. So I thought computer science would be a great fit. So I transferred into computer science. Um, and it was at the perfect time because that's when John Jay first came out with their computer science and information security degree. So I jumped on board that, um, got my degree in 2016, like was mentioned. And then from there, I did what a lot of my friends did is I just applied to literally everything under the sun, everything I could see on LinkedIn, everything I could see on Indeed had a couple of interviews, nothing really panned out. I didn't have great experience. I never did an internship. But at the time, John Jay was developing a cybersecurity initiative out of the, I um, can't remember what, um, what area it was in. It was a group that does all the master's degrees, uh, Office of Graduate Studies. Uh, they were developing this um, program. So I was asked to come help them build it out, um, work some of the camps that they did for high school students as they were trying to get into college. And from there, I really just grew my network. So I started introducing myself to everyone I could, telling them my background, my degree, um, some of the certifications I got. I got Security Plus, uh, CompTIA Security Plus, um, right after graduation to kind of differentiate myself from the pack. And from there, I met somebody who worked at KPMG. 
and I had conversations with him. I impressed him with my um, my skill set, my background. KPMG was hiring at the time, and he really was instrumental in getting me in the door. So from there, I went through some interview processes, um, interviewed with a bunch of different people at KPMG, and ultimately they offered me a job. Uh, you're on mute. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's you know, if it's not Zoom, if somebody doesn't say that at least once. I know. <laughs> um, it sounds so seamless, right? But I, I am very sure it was not um, as calm and reassuring as you describe. Absolutely I'm not. <laughs> I, like I said, I applied to everything under the sun. So many different resumes, so many cover letters. If you've applied for jobs before, you can't just upload your resume. You got to type everything into these little boxes just to either get ghost, have one interview and then get ghosted or make it a couple of rounds, get your hopes up. And then they say, oh, we went with somebody else. Yeah. So it was very tough. A lot of stressful days, just sitting there from nine to five applying jobs. And yeah. I think that was the wrong way to do it, but can't go back and change that? time. Why do you say that? So if you just take your same resume, apply to everything, you're going to not interested. You're going to come out as, all right, he's just applying to everything because what's in his resume, any personal statements is going to be canned. It's going to be something that doesn't really fit. It's kind of like a force fit. So I know when I am doing recruiting, I look for people who really took the time to not just learn about what KPMG is, because if you learn about a company, in my opinion, it doesn't matter that much. It's more so how much do you know about the role you're trying to fill and how can you take your experience and match it to the job description or match it to what you're going to do in the day to day. And that's not something you can do if you apply to a hundred jobs in a day. Yeah. You're just not going to have that time to put in for that. Yeah. Um, this is really golden wisdom. Um, I get a lot of applications for jobs, people who have amazing qualifications, but it's very clear that they are applying to a lot of places and um, it never makes it that far because I, I'm not sure if they really want this job. And, um, you know, and that's an important part of the hiring decision process. I know sometimes we think it's the credentials, but um, people want to understand that you think about the role, the environment, what work you're going to be doing specifically with them. Thank you for that, Joe. No, of course. And you're, you hit the nail on the head. It's about the fit, not about the skills. Because yeah. you could teach anybody yeah. the skills that they need. On-the-job training is definitely something that everybody gives. But Absolutely. you can't teach somebody how to care, how to yes. be passionate. So I think yes. you're completely right there. Absolutely. So since you were talking about things that you uh, regret not doing, <laughs> um, tell us something, maybe one thing that you wish you had learned while you were in college. Yeah, that's a really good question. And this is something I'm actively looking to change. So for all of you who don't know, I'm working with um, some of the professors in the computer science um, department to provide some mentorship and to give some of these um, some of these nuggets of information that I wish I had as a student. And I think the biggest one is knowing when to apply for jobs and knowing when to apply for internships. I think John Jay, in, when I was there, didn't do a great job informing me of what I should do when from a career development point of view. So I would always go about and try to apply for internships in like February, March, or even April. And that's not when people <laughs> recruit for internships people recruit for internships as soon as the summer ends. So the September, October, November period, come November, they already hired their interns for the next year. So I was way too late every year and I didn't understand why. So I think if I could change one thing about John Jay, it's giving you that knowledge of when to apply for internships. Uh, I appreciate that so much. One of the, the things that um, you, you're speaking to there is industry specific knowledge and um, a late development in higher education is the relationship between the degree and the kinds of industries that are out there. And so we very much rely on uh, alum like you to come back and share that so that we can feed that into our academic programming and into sort of the culture of student support. So I'm excited to hear about what happens as a result of 
you taking what you regret or what you didn't do and uh, and turning it around to better impact the thousand or so students that are in your major. So, Joe, what's next for you? What's next in your career trajectory? What does um, perhaps the manager role prepare you to do next? Or um, maybe just what are you excited or thinking about um, that's happening in your field? That's a question I ask myself every day. So right now there's a really big talent shortage for cybersecurity skills, which means the market is just so hot. Everyone's recruiting, everyone's trying to grab talent where they can, which means salaries are going up and up, which is great. So I always take a step back and say, what should I be doing now? Am I happy where I am? Should I look outside? Um, a lot of people in the consulting industry don't usually stay consultants forever. They usually move on to industry jobs like working at a bank or at a um, telecommunications company or wherever else that does some um, types of cyber work. But when I think about it, I literally just got promoted to manager back in um, October. So it finally took effect then. So I'm happy where I am right now. I still love the job. I love the people I work with. Culture is great. I'm constantly working on new and exciting things that are just the cutting edge of the field. So I think I'm gonna stay where I am. And what's next for me is to just keep doing what I'm doing. The next step from here is to be a director. I hope to do that in either two or three years and then beyond all the way up to partnership, which is kind of the CISO equivalent in a private company. So until I stop having fun, um, I'm gonna be here. And if I do stop having fun, I could literally go anywhere. Um, Big four experience, consulting experience, really sets you up for any type of job you want out in industry. Could you explain what you mean by the big four? Uh, sure, so uh, I'm a consultant at KPMG, which is one of the big four accounting firms. So they really specialize in accounting, tax, audit, but they also do advisory work, which is the branch that I'm in. I'm in the cybersecurity department of their advisory practice. And there are other consulting firms um, out there as well. It's not just those four, but in the, um, in the industry, they're called the big four. Thank you for explaining that. Okay, that's it for me. I'm going to open up the floor now to the students. If you could either raise your, your um, Zoom hand, or if you prefer to type your question into the chat, uh, I'm happy to do that, and I'll call on you directly or read your question if you prefer. Awesome. Anthony. Uh, yeah, I have three questions, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you strengthen your cybersec skills? Uh, did you do capture the flags, or did you use websites like TryHackMe? Um, also, what certifications did you obtain after the Security Plus? And is your company hiring for entry-level positions? Sure, I'll start with the first one. Um, I've done hackathons, I've done capture the flags. Um, they helped give me some of the background foundational knowledge I would need to excel in an interview and to have conversations with other professionals. But more in my day to day, I'm less tech, more around policy, governance, risk management. Uh, so a little bit more on the less like technical, more like higher level, more like, uh, yeah, like a CIA, you know, like a CIA SSP uh, a certification type of thing, like yep. management. Yep, exactly. And I and that kind of brings me into the next question you had, what kind of certification do I get after Security Plus? So I've gotten the CISSP. Uh, I got that in February of 2019. Didn't have enough years of experience yet. So I was what's known as an associate of CISSP. But as of September of this year, I hit the, um, the years of experience threshold. So now I'm a full-fledged member of the CISSP um, certification body. Um, I've also gotten certifications in some industry tools. Uh, one is Forcepoint, another is Splunk. Uh, so those are just two tools that are used to aggregate data and alert on interesting events or incidents that may cause a, that may indicate a or something bad happening in the environment. And to answer your third question, KPMG is always hiring. Um, our recruiting for next year actually just ended um, November, uh, like I actually think last week or the week before we gave all of our notices to uh, prospective staff. So the 
golden opportunity to start applying is really the I guess time frame. And that's for campus is, hires. Is what time frame? Um, anywhere between July, June, July, or August. Okay. Okay, great. So this is a good example of um, how uh, Joe is going to help us to tweak our cycle so that we don't have graduating seniors um, uh, looking in in May and potentially being out of work. So it's junior year, the summer right after junior year is the ideal time. And I would just add to that, that means that your junior year is the ideal time to secure a really great internship because that experience would have just happened. You would have industry relevant letters of recommendation, and then you're going on the market to, to take a look at the opportunities out there. Thank you, Joe, this is great. Daniel. No, you're welcome. Hi, so yeah, my question is, um, how important are certifications as opposed to technical skills? Which one is more important? Let's say for the role of a security analyst, would you need uh, more to know like about the policies or would you need to sharpen up your technical skills? Because while I study for certifications, I noticed that it's like a lot of theory and not much like hands-on experience, if that makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. And you're right. I think a lot of the certifications don't get into the nitty gritty of the technical skills, um, unless you go for some of those um, like really hardcore pen testing certifications, which I can never do. <laughs> but I think it's a blend of both that you need. I think the certifications will give you the foundational knowledge you'll need to really compete um, in the marketplace to have those high level conversations with hiring managers in a way that they don't feel like they're talking to somebody with no experience, they feel like they're talking to a peer because you'll know the same vernacular, the vocabulary, the language, the topics, but you'll also want the technical skills to back it up. So if you do have to do any um, on the on the job uh, exercises or tests, I know like if you all know coding interviews, um, you have to do whiteboard exercises. If this organization that you're applying to does something similar, like they give you a scenario that comes in through the SOC, uh, the Security Operations Center, and they ask you, how would you deal with this? having that technical skill will really differentiate you from those who don't have it. So I think certifications are very helpful because on paper, and even when you have high level conversations, they'll be very beneficial, but it depends on what kind of job you're going for, or how important those technical skills are. Gotcha, thank you Great. so much. Thank you so much, Joe. So I have uh, Jennifer next, then Rafay, and uh, Hassan has a question in the chat. So those of you, uh, other people, if you are interested in asking questions, don't hesitate to raise your hand. Jennifer, over to you. Um, I was gonna ask the same question, um, but now I'm thinking about something else. I'm interested in cybersecurity. However, um, I'm taking a cybercrime class now and they're, they're teaching more of like a cybercrime investigation and there's something like a role that I'm interested. Is there like any recommendation on the type of certifications that you would recommend to take? If you're interested in cybercrime and taking a angle of law, like prosecution or defense or any type of the legality side, mm -hmm. I would suggest the Security Plus. That way you can get the high level knowledge so you know what access control is, so you know what encryption is, things like that. So you kind of have a background. I don't think you'll need to be super technical because you'll probably have subject matter experts who will support but having that background will really help with prosecuting or dealing with any of the laws because they can get very technical from a buzzword point of view. Um, so you'd wanna equip yourself with that. But that also brings me to a point that cybersecurity touches everywhere in our lives. I think going the law route and focusing on cybercrime is astronomically important because we have so many privacy laws being written and those are written at the state level and then you, Think about the ones in Europe. They're just massive. And it's so hard to um, so hard to figure out what it actually means from my point of view, because I'm not a lawyer, but having a lawyer involved in some of that work. And also if you go to, into prosecution, uh, the law is like decades behind where we're so I think having more people like you on the law front is going to be critical for us to not just prosecute, but also try to deter some of these hacks. 
Thank you. Yeah, this, it's a great question, Jennifer. So because we are Georgia College of Criminal Justice, we just we don't have cybersecurity in just one major. So um, Jennifer is likely taking this program through protection management, the sort of uh, security end of things. And, and Jennifer, just to add on to the conversation, um, you'll be in a really great position if you understand cybersecurity from an interdisciplinary perspective, as Joe is alluding to. So there are going to be the technical people, they're going to be the policy people, they're also going to be process people, compliance people, all kinds of things. And if you understand the frameworks for uh, how these folks operate, that allows you to be in the room and understand the conversation from multiple perspectives and think about the management of those teams and how to, um, how to fit in in such a dynamic context that again impacts everybody so so i think it's a great question to think about your certifications but also to look further into the broad range of opportunities not just the technical opportunities in there thank you okay rafe um hi joe uh i had some general questions regarding like you mentioned a lot of like um, CISSP and then, you know, four point, but what about like, what are some of the sources you use to gain these certificates? Cause I know there's like sources like um, isc2.org or Coursera, and you can also go in person. So like, what would be like recommendation for someone that doesn't have a degree in cybersecurity, but wants to learn more? Cause yeah, I, so I yeah. Nope, go ahead, finish your thought. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I'm like, I'm a criminology major, but I have interests and I have background like in with, working with computers, not like advanced like Python or coding. So I was like, what are some sites or like sources I can go to to get these certificates and what are like, you know, the most competitive ones? Yeah. So for certification specifically, ISC2, uh, ISC squared, uh, like you mentioned, that has a couple of certifications, one being the CISSP. I wouldn't recommend getting that right away. I would get that when you have one or two years of experience under your belt, because it is a very difficult test. Um, I have no idea how I passed it. Uh, a lot of my coworkers did not, and they had more experience <laughs> than me. I just think I guessed right on half of them. <laughs> but I would not rush to that yet. Um, Security Plus is a lot more simplistic, but covers a lot of the basic information that you need. It really nails down the foundations. And if I can go back and change anything, I would not change getting that right out of college because that gave me a lot of the foundational knowledge and a lot of the ways to speak, speak the industry language, um, which helped. And it gave me that low level um, concept of what these different foundational areas do. So oh. access control encryption are just two of them, but there are so many. And that's a CompTIA and they have their own training for that certification. But other than that, for general industry, um, I use Reddit. Um, there's a cybersecurity um, thread um, area. I can't remember what they're called, but uh, I use that. Um, Google News, I have that um, tweaked a certain way that I get a lot of cyber news. And then just talking to my friends in industry. So. I don't know if any of you heard, but there was a Comcast outage yesterday. Um, I had no idea until I was talking to somebody who um, was affected and dealing with the issue because one of our clients is Comcast. Yeah, I discovered that when I couldn't log in to anything <laughs> in the morning and my kid's uh, school was offline. <laughs> that was fun. All right, thank you for your question, Rafe. Um, I'm going over to Hassan in the chat. So his question is, and he says, so I'm a junior right now. My major is criminal justice BS. I don't have much experience in cybersecurity or computer science, but my question is, what is something that I can do to maybe just enter this area? Are there, um, are, are there certifications that would help me with this major? Or do you think I shouldn't pursue cybersecurity at all? I will never tell anybody not to pursue cybersecurity unless they have literally no passion for it and it will be a waste of time. So if you think cyber is something you wanna get into, go for it. Um, that being said, I also probably wouldn't just rush into a certification because at the end of the day, they do, they do cost money. You do have to pay for the certifications. 
uh, and the training that goes along. I think Security Plus, I paid like 500 bucks. And for CISSP, between the boot camp, the books, and the certification, it was more like $4,000. And I was lucky to have my company pay for all of that because they support um, different training initiatives. But out of pocket, if you're not going to go down that path, it'll be a waste of money. Um, I would do some learning online, YouTube, um, news articles. Um, if you really want to start learning about cybersecurity in general, um, there is a framework. Um, it's called the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. That's N-I-S-T. Um, it's federally funded, um, the organization NIST, and they put out a cybersecurity framework that covers a lot of the foundational areas. And I want to say 95 plus percent of organizations, like Fortune 500 organizations in the U.S., use that framework. Perfect. Dean, you're right on top of this. <laughs> um, it has five core areas. Yep, five core areas that really cover end-to-end -end cybersecurity. And it really does it in a very light touch where it shows you kind of what are the main controls you should look for. And by controls, I mean, what are some of the main things you should have in place to help prevent cyber attacks? And that covers anything from governance to incident response, to monitoring, to privacy, the whole gamut. So you don't wanna initially just jump into a certification, reading through that framework will really help you understand the field. Yeah, and I mean, the only reason I know this stuff very well is because I worked on a project some years ago um, where uh, trying to bring together the technical knowledge with the soft skills that uh, college students need to fit into some of these areas. And um, communications is my background. So in, in having to sit there with people from talking about cybersecurity from different perspectives, the, the question is always, how do we get this to fit? And the NIST, the NIST framework is extremely helpful in, in terms of understanding um, the concepts that are playing out across industry. So I, it's a great suggestion for you, Hassan, but I would also um, make a recommendation recommendation of taking um, in the course in uh, computer science, the security, uh, fire and emergency management, they have a cyber any in either one of those places, whether you have the appetite for it, you know, um, you can always, you can always add majors and minors and, uh, and take certifications but that thing of what you love to do is really critical here. So um, you're, you're only in junior year, and I know that's near the end in theory, but learning is lifelong. And you might want to think about how you're organizing your courses for the spring so that you can test the waters to see what you love and what um, maybe develops a passion for exploring more things in either the technical or the non-technical side of cybersecurity. We have a lot at John Jay, and, and you might want to also make an appointment for some academic advisement to talk about some of these things. But I wouldn't walk away without exploring further. And what was the course that you mentioned? OK. Me? Oh, it was a. Um, we were trying to do, we were trying to do this. Um, we didn't actually end up. Uh, sustaining it, but we were trying to do this sort of internship program um, for students interested in cybersecurity and how to, at the time, this was maybe 2013 or so, um, John Jay wasn't really on the map yet as a place for cybersecurity students. And uh, the volume of students enrolling in internships wasn't that high, um, particularly because um, uh, you know, most internships are unpaid and our students weren't able to do that. So um, the concept that uh, another dean had was to collaborate with this organization that was doing this thing called virtual internships in cybersecurity and to see how, um, how it might work to get students uh, industry mentors 
um, along with an understanding of the framework around cybersecurity. And uh, while we moved on from that concept, um, it led to a lot of um, grant proposals to really build out our capacity to support um, uh, this uh, sort of um, pathway into the cybersecurity professions. Okay, great. Yeah, I think um, you said 2013, but it sounds something that I went through back in 2016. Um, loved the concept, not did, loved the company me, that did it. Tell, tell, what was it? Tell me, tell me what it was. Oh, you're breaking up. Is that me we or is that you? The exact same thing. We're talking about, um, that's probably me. Was it IQ4? Yes, it was. Does that sound familiar? And that's yeah. exactly it. So, so yes. So that, that was my, thank you, Joe. I am not offended at all. That was my experience as well. It was a great concept, not in the right hands. And, uh, and so, um, uh, as, as Dean, uh, I took some of those things, broke it apart and did it in a different way. And, uh, and I'm very proud, very proud of that, but, um, that was my experience in learning what exactly the NIST framework is trying to do and how to make that more accessible to students who are here because they're really interested in, um, in, in criminal justice and investigations, but from a number of different fields. And most people imagine, like some of our students on here, that if they don't have a particular background, they can't do cybersecurity, and that's that's actually incorrect, as you know. Yep. Oh, he for an IQ four. That's so funny. I actually am still. <laughs> I was brought back in this year, but I'm finding a way no. to <laughs> break ties because one guy brought me in. I really like him a lot. Not the C CEO of it, but uh, what's his name? Robert Hamilton. Not Frank. Not Frank. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He brought me in, but. I, I can't do it. It's gotten so much worse than I remember. And I'm, it's just hard to see and hard to deal with. But off topic. Really? <laughs> um, in the year, that is it's funny. I'd love to know more. I really would. But um, yes, let's connect offline on that. Different, different. <laughs> <laughs> Rafay, I see your hand. Um. I had a question as a recruiter. Um, I heard like for entry level positions, people recommend like IBM certificate or Google IT specialist. Is that something you've heard of? Like I heard the website was Coursera. So it's not, uh, apparently it's not as expensive and it's like more of a, like a foot into like an entry position. So have you heard of these and like how, like, you know, are they relevant or are they not relevant? At KPMG, it's not relevant. Um, we go more on the fact of, can you speak normally? Can we put, basically, can we put you in front of a client? We'll teach you everything else, but we can't teach those soft skills. It's very hard. Um, so we don't specifically ask for those. It really depends on the company. And it also depends on what you're looking to do. So if you're looking to work for a company that does a lot of work in the cloud, they may expect you to have either a GCP, Google Cloud, platform or uh, Amazon AWS certification, at least like the foundational fundamentals one, because that will show them that you kind of know what you're talking about in that space. So I don't like answering your question with a, it depends, but it, it really depends on where you're going and what you're looking to do and who that specifically com specific company is. Um, thank you. I have one more question going off yeah. of that um, for like KPMG, right? So would you be interested in someone that had like, let's say, um, cause I worked in Staples and easy tech. So I had some technical skills with computers, but then also it was a lot of customer service. So would that be like something that the company would be interested in? Like, like, um, based on what you said. Yeah. Somebody with those skill sets, uh, as long as you have the ability to talk about different topics that are technical. Yeah. Definitely somebody with those experiences and a degree to back it up would be valuable. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, Rosanne, just let me know that my internet keeps coming in and out. I'm going to switch channels in a second, but um, 
will call. Oh, Anthony, you lowered your hand. So I'm going to go to Daniel next. And Anthony, if you uh, decide to ask your question, just. Uh, yes, uh, Joe. So I have, I've heard a lot of people, they go to get into cybersecurity. They first find like a help desk analyst job and make their way up. Do you recommend this route? Or, I mean, if you get a BS in, in cybersecurity, do you think like you just go for the security analyst instead of like starting from IT and move up? That's a great question. So while I never knock help desk, I think if you want to go in security, it's somewhat a little bit more difficult to switch from help desk to security. It's definitely possible and easier than starting from zero. But once you get somewhere, you kind of get stuck in what you're doing. And not to say you won't move up in help desk, but if your dream job is security, I would spend a little bit more time trying to get a like a tier one security analyst or a SOC analyst position. And they're out there. Um, everybody has a security operations center. Everyone has a ton of logs coming in and they need to deal with events, incidents, um, policy violations. So the jobs are out there, but that's kind of the route I would go personally. Can I, can I ask a clarifying think. question on that? Yeah. Because I think I think what you're saying is is really important because sometimes people will say to me, well, I'm not going to, I, I want to go to law school. So I'm going to start as a paralegal and they're, they're really not one in the same. So, so maybe you could just clarify uh, a little bit about why you um, think that these are not really um, closely tied and why a, a better, the, the route you identified might work out is it the use of skills is it the um just the volume of work you'll you'll never make it in that direction what what leads you to that sure so i'll clarify what i said before there's always a way to jump back and forth so just because you go down one path doesn't mean you can't go the other but in industry we usually separate technology into two distinct fields one is it which is fixing hardware, standing up hardware, building servers, basically running the technology. And then you have security, which is securing the technology. So there are two really distinct fields. There's not a lot of overlap unless you're in a very small company. So if you're in a corporation that has a thousand people working in IT or in technology, you'll have that distinct split. And they don't really go back and forth. They work together to secure a system. So as me as a security practitioner, I have to go to the server owners and say, hey, you need to put these tools in place or these controls in place to better secure your server. But I'm not gonna be the one to actually do it, if that makes sense, unless I'm a security engineer and I'm doing, and that's my job. Um, so if you're doing help desk, your main job is really to fix any issues that the user has, either they need to reset their password or their screen's broken, they need a replacement, or they can't access the internet. Um, and the security side, um, a SOC analyst would see different types of alerts that say, hey, this user is trying to take data out of the firm that could be proprietary. We blocked it, now you take a look at it, something wrong, or we let it go. Now you have to look at it, see if it was really bad, and then kick off a response plan to mitigate that risk or lower that risk. So either call the employee's manager and say, hey, we need to get the employee to delete that data wherever they sent it to, if it was their own address, or we gotta, we gotta do some other type of contingency plan to make sure that data doesn't fall in the wrong hands. So two real distinct splits in bigger organizations that don't really jump across that well. That's very, help That's very helpful. So organizations are very structured and roles are very well defined. So the likelihood that you'll get exposure to the cybersecurity end from help desk is really slim. So it's not necessarily the right pathway for building up your capacity or exposure in that area. Correct. Super, super helpful. Thank you, Anthony. And then there is a question from Gen C in the chat. Yeah, this is for the Dean. I'm not sure if you have anything to do with the John Jay Careers website, but I check back frequently and I don't really ever see any cybersecurity related internships there. 
It's just all like yeah. security officer roles and stuff like that. That's a it's a it's a great question. So the jobs are actually in the computer science department. So there is a career advisor located in computer science. That is your best place to go for computer science related cybersecurity jobs. Thank you. You're more than welcome. And if you send me an email, I can co connect you directly to that person. They oh, great. Tend okay. to reply. They tend to reply to my emails quickly. So please take advantage of me. Okay. Yes, thank you. It's in the it's in the chat. So Gen C's question. I'm a senior and right now I'm working on getting an internship, but also I'm trying to get an entry level job that I hope will be related to my major. Unfortunately, I haven't had any chance to be involved with any projects to add to my resume. What would um, what uh, knowledge or what kinds of things could be added to a resume to improve her chances when searching for jobs? So this is exactly how I got involved with IQ4. It was this kind of scenario that led to um, what it might look like to give students some exposure and some mentoring to help address the kind of thing that uh, Gen C is describing. So now that we know that's not a pathway, <laughs> what might you suggest, Joe? All right, and that's an excellent question. It's <laughs> something every student that I've had in my cohort struggle with. There was only one of us and I had a group of about seven people that we were kind of a crew in computer science. Only one of them had a job before graduating and none of us got an internship before graduating. So that was our major struggle. And one thing that really helped is the coursework. So Jency, I completely forgot what your uh, major is. So you wanna throw that in the chat real quick? Computer science, perfect, perfect. So then this will apply much more better or much better. Um, so I would put a lot of the courses that you found exceptionally interesting or you did exceptionally well in, um, show what you learned there. Um, resumes are usually broken up into two sections, education and experience. But there's no real rule as to how long each section needs to be. When I graduated, my education section filled up like three fourths of the page. And then experience, I didn't have much. So it filled up just the very bottom with like one part-time job I had through college as a basketball referee. So not super applicable, but shows that I was responsible, committed, uh, things, job perspective, in, jobs employers are looking for to see what kind of competencies you have. If you're responsible, trustworthy, um, customer service oriented. So I would think putting a lot of your education down would be beneficial, in, especially in courses that you did well in, really liked, or that really go hand in hand with the job you're looking for. That's great, thank you. Um, there, there are also questions in here about um, uh, what do you think about Cisco certifications? Um, Anthony says that he thinks that vendor neutral certifications are better, but you, Joe, might think otherwise. What's your view on that? So Cisco certifications are great. If you want to go into networking or network security, I have not really kept up with what their certification offerings are. I'm in a similar boat that when you're brand new, vendor neutral certs are better because you can go and get a Cisco cert and then you find out that the company you're going to uses Palo Alto or some other um, service. So your mm -hmm. Cisco cert won't really apply. But once you get in, um, and you find out they're using Cisco, they're a heavy Cisco environment, definitely raise your hand and say, hey, can I go get some Cisco certs so I can be better at my job? And 99.9% .9 of the organizations will say, yeah, go for it. And a decent amount of them will actually pay for it for you. So I wouldn't bottle yourself in to a specific vendor right away, but definitely be open. Like I said before, I've gotten Splunk and Forcepoint certifications to better help my clients who are using those tools. And it really helped me help them. Great. Thank you for that. So we have time for the last two questions, Anthony and Daniel. 
and then we will uh, wrap up if, and of course give Joe a very big round of applause. Oh, I, I left my hand up. I'm sorry. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Daniel. Uh, yes, I'm me again. So, um, Joe, um, what specific skills would you look for in a new hire, like or range of skills that, like, if you see, you'll be like, well, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. So when I look for people, I look for people who can present themselves well. So timely, professional, uh, both in appearance and speaking wise, um, have some kind of foundational knowledge of the field. I don't expect new hires to know everything. I don't even expect them to know a small fraction of things. But when I say something like confidentiality or integrity or availability, I hope that they would know what those terms mean. And I would hope that they know that they have a very important place in cybersecurity. Um, I may go a little bit deeper and start talking about the NIST framework just to see how much they know. But if they know nothing of that, I'm not too concerned. It's really all about that presentation of yourself and being able to articulate your skills and your background in a way that can get me on board with who you are as a person. Um, I like to say this all the time, you can't teach somebody to be normal. So you can't teach somebody, and I don't mean that by being outgoing or being introverted, extroverted. I just mean, you can't teach somebody to speak. You can't teach somebody how to change who they are. So you look for somebody who yeah. kind of fits what your company culture is. And the technical skills, the like hands-on skills, we can teach you all that. And I think that's what a lot of organizations look for as well. Like they look for the person. They don't look for the skill. Yeah, the skill is helpful. But if they find the right person, they can train you up on all the skills that you need. Mm -hmm. It's, it's Thanks, such Jill. an important point. It's such an important point. I can't stress this to you all. Um, you know, remember that uh, work cultures are team environments. You, you're actually, uh, for those of you who played on uh, sports teams or who were in a school band or play with other people, you're in a really great position to um, do well in organized culture because everything is collaborative. And people want to understand in an interview that they will not hate you tomorrow, that they that a month from now when you're working with you and staying late after six, they're not going to be miserable because you don't uh, execute your end of the the um, project or you don't take feedback very well. So I'm going to make a suggestion because I teach people how to speak all the time. And I'm going to share a link, not because I read this article, but because it has an item that I think is really good for a beginner way to, imp to um, get comfortable with good interviewing. It's called the STAR technique. Um, sometimes when you're in interviews, people will ask you, tell me about a time when. So uh, how do you respond to conflict and so on? And new interviewees get thrown off by this. And the STAR technique can help you to improve the way you respond. Situation, task, uh, um, and basically the, the and, and an explanation of the result that happened. So situation, task, action, and result. T what's the situation you were in? What was your role? What did you do in your role? And what was the result of you doing that thing? It gives a structure or a framework for talking about yourself in an action-oriented way. Here's what I do. Here's how I respond. This is what it's like to work with me. And I want you to kind of, um, when you're doing Google searches about how to do interviews, look up behavioral interviews and keep looking up star technique and practice that out. No one wants a flat answer. They're trying to get a sense of what you are like. And stories, much like when they're in songs, when they're in movies, when they are with, between you and your friends, people remember stories. But most of all, they remember how that story made them feel. And when I feel good after a story, I remember that. And I'm more likely to make a good decision as a result of that feeling. And that's where you want to land, okay? 
So um, that is uh, advanced communication in about like 30 seconds, but it's all out there on the internet. But remember that part, you have a lot of skills, but how you present them can often make the difference in, uh, in the hiring decision, okay? All right. So if there are no other questions, we're going to start wrapping this up. Um, Joe, I, I have to tell you, I've done a lot of these um, J chats with the Dean, and this has been one of the most uh, dynamic and engaging conversations. Aside from a lot of technical information, you also gave us um, practical, thoughtful, as well as encouraging guidance about how to go from John Jay to your dream job. And I really, really appreciate that. Uh, so folks, if you could just unmute for a second and just give Joe a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> and, Thank you. and I would, sorry, go ahead, Joe. No, I was gonna say, it's a great chat. I was happy to be here, very engaging. I'm happy it wasn't just me speaking and word vomiting for an hour. <laughs> No, no, I, you know, one of the things that, um, and you know, you, you went to John Jay, so um, hopefully you'll see the kind of uh, vision that we have here. There are a lot of big events that have tons and tons of people, but something different happens when it's a small group and people get to really ask questions and make connections and share advice as we've seen in the chat. But also I'm hopeful that folks will do the next step, which Roseanne always talks about, which is to network and to make connections. And hopefully they, you will get some emails um, with students who are giving, um, who are following up and asking additional questions or trying to connect with you as part of their network, because that's an important part of the professional development and, and uh, post-grad success. Piece. Just as you mentioned that Robert Hamilton is, uh, sorry, oh man, we still have to talk. Robert <laughs> Hamilton is still trying to keep in touch. Um, you know, that's, that's what's to be expected. So Joe, folks, is part of your professional network in the cybersecurity field. And we expect that after this one hour in a small group context where you got to make connections with him, and ask direct questions that you will do your part in following up and building a relationship so that he becomes part of a meaningful part of your network. Yeah, 100%. Feel free. Um, find me on LinkedIn. I'm there. Um, just search my name. I think I'm one of the only Joe Mazellas that are out there, um, at least the coolest one. Um, but <laughs> completely right. It's all about your network. Um, it's, you've heard this a million times, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. I like to challenge that a little bit. I think mm -hmm. who you know will get you in the door, but what you know will get you the job. That's how I got my job, oh, is my great. network. That's great. So I'm, I'm looking through, uh, I'm looking through Joe's, um, I'm on his LinkedIn and our shared connections are actually everybody from I the IT4 experience. <laughs> Liba, Soraya. <laughs> I still keep in touch with them. No way. So I They're used a to be competitor the honors, though. I, I used to be the honors and Macaulay director when you oh, okay. been in undergrad. So uh, I recruited both of them to the college and I see Kalu Be Beckford is there. This is hilarious. So look at that. I, I didn't know Joe before. And um, all of a sudden on LinkedIn, I realized that we have 11 people in common. So just keep that in mind, folks, that building your, your network, it's, it's, as Joe said, it's not just who you know.